Good morning, very warm welcome to our service for Sunday the 30th of August. Um, there's quite a lot going on in the life of the church at the moment. So before we get started with the worship, I have a few notices uh, to bring to your attention. We've kind of been in a few different seasons over the last few months, and we're coming into a new season in the church, which I know some of you have been really looking forward to. And um, an amazing part of that is we are going to be able to open our churches for public worship from next Sunday, the 6th of August. And we have been thinking and planning the last few months, really, about how that can happen so that everybody is as safe and comfortable as they possibly can be. So we can get as many people into the building as possible and so that we can spend time worshipping, praying together, hearing from God's word so that young and old and everybody who wants to be a part of our churches at St John's and St Mary's can be a part. And that's what we're working towards. And I am really excited. And I know Dave is really excited as well about what's been happening. But there are a few practical details that I'd love to mention to you. So next Sunday, we will be having three Sunday services in our buildings. There'll be a nine o'clock service and a 10.30 service at St John's and a nine o'clock service at St Mary's. The services will all be exactly the same. We'll have um, the same sermons, same reading, same prayers across the services. The 9.30 and 10.30, there'll be no difference between them. And um, as you can imagine, when uh, you come to our buildings, they'll be set up a little bit differently than they have been before. And we'll be sending out a video with a step-by-step -step walkthrough of that uh, at the beginning of this week. But just to give you a taster, there'll be the normal things of socially distancing as you're waiting outside. Please do turn up a little bit before the service time. Um, when you come in, we'll need to use hand sanitizer. If you, um, unless you're exempt or you're a small child, or have a small child, please do wear a face covering. Well, there'll be particular places that we will ask you to sit and, uh, and you'll have to come into church in a particular order and go out as well at, at the end. The services will be a bit shorter. They'll be about 45 minutes long. And um, we aren't at the moment, unfortunately, allowed to sing, but there will be music as part of the services. And we will be sharing in Holy Communion just as much as we did before. Um, there'll just be a couple of changes uh, Dave or I will be bringing communion to you in your seats rather than you coming to the front and we'll just be sharing the wafers rather than the bread and the wine. Uh, if um, you are coming to St John's then we ask that you let us know in advance which service you are planning to come to. The, because we have a limited capacity we can only fit uh, 20 households in St John's, about 15 in St Mary's, then we need to and we want to leave some spaces for any visitors who would turn up at the last minute. We need you as regular members of our church to sign up for one of the services, the nine o'clock or the 10.30 at St John's. We'll be sending out a link and it's literally a two question um, um, form that you need to fill on online. And that means we'll have your details. We also have them for the track and trace if we need to. And if you don't feel comfortable using that form, then you can just contact Dave or I and we will uh, we can do that on online and we will um, have that ready for you. But please do be thinking, which of the services at St John's will I want to register to come to? And it's a first come, first served basis. So do do that as soon as you possibly can. There'll be other things as well, but that's the main things about the services next Sunday morning. Other things are starting up. Our Wednesday Holy Communion service will be restarting on Wednesday morning. And uh, on Friday, we'll be having morning prayer uh, and the church will be open at St Mary's as well. And also, so Tuesday, we'll also still be having Tuesday and Friday morning prayer on Facebook uh, live. Uh, but you can also join us if you want on Friday morning for that at St Mary's. Uh, what else do I have to mention? Uh, oh, children. I knew there were some things. So we're looking at what we can do for youth. And uh, that won't be on a, a Sunday morning, but we're hoping that we can have um, some kind of youth group uh, gathering in a socially distanced way, an appropriate way, very soon in the middle of the week at St John's. Do watch out for that if you have anybody in that age group. And for our children, unfortunately, as you can imagine, we have loads, dozens of children every Sunday at St John's. 
And there's no way practically, safely, that we can run our children's groups at the moment. But what we want to do is if you are able to come and join us uh, for our services, so that you as a family feel at home and feel welcome. So uh, most Sundays, there'll be a little video content for families and children during the service. There'll also be a bag for every family uh, to use in your pew, as it were, even if you're at St Mary's, uh, to use some activities some different things you can use uh, during the service. And uh, we hope you enjoy and make the most of those. I'm sure there'll be other things that we will remember, but I think that's enough notices for the time being. Let's have a, a moment of quiet as we turn our minds to worship this morning. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. We pray together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our prayer, collect prayer for this Sunday, Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we to pray and to give more than either we desire or deserve. I love that. Pour down upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving us those things of which our conscience is afraid and giving to us those good things which we are not worthy to ask through the merits and meditation of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let's take a moment to confess our foolishness, our selfishness, our trying to make our own lives right and our own strength to God. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, God will not despise. So let us come to the Lord, who is full of compassion, acknowledge our transgressions, impenitence and faith. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ died for us. Forgive us what is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. So may almighty God who sent his son into the world to save us sinners bring us his pardon and his peace now and forever. Amen. Bringing it all to peace The storm surrounding me Let it break At your name Still Call the sea to still The rage in me to still Every wave At your name Jesus, Jesus You make the darkness tremble Jesus, Jesus, you silence fear. Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus, breathe. Call these bones to live. Call these lungs to see once again.
from Matthew 16, verses 21 to 28. From that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Far be it from you, Lord, this shall never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan, you are a hindrance to me, for you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. Then Jesus told his disciples, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? Or what shall a man give in return for his soul? For the Son of Man is going to come with his angels in the glory of his Father. And then he will repay each person according to what he has done. Truly, I say to you, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. So this morning we are looking at this passage from Matthew's Gospel that Rach just read to us. And this passage is set at a time in Jesus' life when he had been going around and healing the sick and raising the dead, feeding thousands of people. People were beginning to understand the kind of person Jesus was, but he knows what has to happen next. He needs to go from this life uh, to Jerusalem, to the capital city, to the, um, the finale, as it were, of this part of his life. And his friends, his disciples, are wondering what is going to happen? What's this going to be about? And I want us to think this morning, as Jesus explains what he is about, about a central concept in who Jesus is, the humility of Jesus, and the humility that then that encourages us to follow, to live out. Remember that what people around Jesus were hoping for was a Messiah to make everything right. And Jesus did make everything right. He saved the whole of humanity. He uh, made it so every sin was forgiven, that death was defeated. He made everything right, but it wasn't in the way that people were expecting it to be. What people wanted was a a superhero, uh, a messiah who was like a general. You know, the kind of general that rides on a horse in front of his armies, the armies that would defeat the Roman Empire that had taken over their country. Uh, They wanted that impressive general or an even more fantastic king figure. Somebody who would sit on a throne with an impressive crown. Somebody who would build an amazing palace. A superhero figure. We know lots about superheroes, don't we? That And that's what they wanted. Uh, that's what they were expecting. And people had begun to hope, as they got to see what Jesus was doing, as they got to see Jesus talking about the kingdom and, and, and uh, God being at work, maybe this is the Messiah. And Jesus has something of a surprise for those people. Jesus is saying, Something very different from that superhero, I'm going to sit on an impressive throne with an impressive gold crown. He knows that his journey to Jerusalem, to the capital city, isn't going to be one of a superhero that's getting more and more praise and adoration. Well, there's a bit of that, but he knows that actually he's he's not going to end up sitting on a throne in a palace. He's going to end up hanging on a cross, not a gold crown, but a crown of thorns. He knows that that's the life, the Messiah that he is. He says that he must go to the capital city to suffer and be killed. And Peter, uh, who loves Jesus, is horrified at this. You can imagine Peter thinking, Jesus, you're awesome. You're amazing the way that you heal the sick and you preach the truth and 
could you just not get even some more of that amazing glory and impressiveness? And Jesus says, no. And he doesn't just say it for him, he says it for us. If you want to be my follower, you must deny yourself. Take up your cross, just like I'm doing it, Jesus is saying, and follow me. You must live the same kind of life. The same kind of life that, yes, there might be praise and glory sometimes, but actually there's a cross. There is, there is hardship. There is burdens. There is things that you don't have to bear that following Jesus you should bear. That was Jesus. He didn't have to take the cross, but he did. He, he chose humility because that was the life that he was called to do. And Jesus is saying, well, if you want to be like me, if you want to be my follower, you need to do the same thing. You need to follow the same path as me. Not of becoming a more and more impressive person, but of sacrifice for God, for others. The alternative that Jesus could have talked about to this sacrificial following Jesus is a life when we try and make our lives better and uh, yeah, we try and work it out. And that's always our temptation, isn't it? I don't want to think about that. I want to get concrete about what does it mean to lose your life, to follow Jesus. You know, so often we want to do things a bit for us and a bit for Jesus. Often mostly for us and a little bit for Jesus. Most of the time, most of our thoughts for us, a little bit on the end for Jesus. Have you ever thought, I will do this bit for Jesus when I've done all these things for me that have to come first, that are, that are more important? And uh, Jackie Pullinger, who has um, worked for decades in Hong Kong with some of the people who are suffering amazingly, hugely with addiction and poverty, um, who's tried to live this sacrificial life, she says it like this. She says, following Jesus may interfere with the night you're going to wash your hair. I love that. So practical, isn't it? She has this picture of, you know, you're, you're saying, yes, I'll follow Jesus, come what may. But tonight, oh, my hair's a bit dirty. I look a bit, uh, you know, tonight, the priority for me, the thing I need to do first is to wash my hair. And, and um, not such a problem for me. But um, Jackie might say, yeah, but it might be that evening that actually um, the, the evening that God wants you to do something for him. Following Jesus might interfere, will interfere, he says, with the thing we need to do to, to make things all right for us. The things we feel we have to do. Because, you know, we're selfish, aren't we? I am selfish. I want to serve Jesus, yes, wholeheartedly, at the level that suits me. But Jesus wasn't like that. He didn't serve people at the level that suited them. He uh, suited him, rather. He, he served people at the level that suited others, that suited God, that suited God's purposes. And he died and he says to me, Holly, will you do the same? Jesus was the least narcissistic person you can imagine. I'd love to speak for a sermon series on, on uh, Jesus and narcissism, but he, he, in a way, he should have been the most narcissistic person because he was God. He could have been going around pruning, saying, look at me, I'm so awesome, all day long. And he didn't. In fact, what did he do over and over again? He pointed away from himself. He didn't say, look, I'm awesome. I've done all these things, raised the dead, healed the sick, preached to thousands, fed even more. He didn't say that. He didn't see the need. He didn't have the need to puff himself up and make himself look good because he knew he, who he was. He just wanted to do right. Can we be like that? The way that God might want to show us what we're holding on to, what this big block of stuff that we're saying, we have to do our way before we do that little bit for Jesus. Well, how you might know, how I might know what that is, the things we're holding on to, are the things that we say are non-negotiables. I wonder what those might be. For you, if you have any, I have lots. The non-negotiables, the things that we know we have to protect and cannot give up, uh, that we have to put first. Uh, for some people, it might be washing your hair. For other, it, it might be your job, your position, whatever it is. For me, um, really, in the past, it, it, it's been 
you know, I must not give up that people can see that I've done okay, that people have seen that I've done right. You know, I'm, I cannot let it be seen that I have failed, that I've done something wrong, that I haven't managed to do what I should have done as a vicar, as, as a father, as a husband. You know, that was a non-negotiable. I would do anything for Jesus, anything whatsoever, as long as I ended up, you know, doing the right thing and people knew that I'd done the right thing. That was a non-negotiable. And Jesus has been saying to me over the last few years, yeah, you can, you, does it really matter? Does it really matter if people see that you've got it wrong, that you've failed over and over again? Does it really matter? Because Ollie, you're mine. You're mine. And that's when I begin to feel okay. Because I know I've messed this all up again and again and again. But I'm his and it is okay. What are the non-negotiables for you? The things that you know you have to hold on to, that you mustn't fall apart. I don't know what they are, but um, would you take them in a minute? Will you take a second to have a think about them? Ask God, what, what are the non-negotiables? I've heard, um, you know, I've said this myself, I'll give to others. I will be hospitable to others. I will give my home and my space and my money. Um, I'll give a certain amount to them as long as I keep a lot for me. As long as, you know, maybe, you know, say, well, as long as I can have that good holiday that I've been looking forward to in a couple of months' time. We've all been looking forward to those, haven't we? As long as we make sure that we still have that house that we need or that we still look, have those clothes that we need in order to look good. As long as we still have that haircut or whatever it is, I'll give as long as the non-negotiables are non-negotiable. And Jesus will say to me and to us, yeah, those non-negotiables. Let's have a look at them. Or it might be um, that, um, I've heard this and I've said it myself, I'll mend that relationship as long as that person, the other person apologises. As long as that other person admits that they are wrong. As long as that other person changes their behaviour. That's a non-negotiable. Then, yeah, then I will forgive them. Then I will treat them well. Jesus might say, hmm, let's have a look at that non-negotiable. There are probably a thousand different non-negotiables that we have. Some big ones, some small ones. I've said most of them a battle with me and Jesus. And Jesus might say, your non-negotiables, the things that you know you have to hold on to, they're the things you need to trust me. They might be little things like having to, you know, your hair looking good or your appearance. They might be big things like your pride, your position, your home. Those non-negotiables, Ollie, or you, they're the things that you need to trust me with. Ollie, you're going to look like an idiot. People are going to mock you and, and that's going to be okay because you are mine. Let's take a moment to pray. And as you're watching this, um, will you ask God to show you some non-negotiables? That's what I've been doing. And should we pray that we can begin to uh, trust God with them and act differently? Holy Spirit, please um, come and open up those parts of our hearts where, you know, where we're holding on to things when we're not ready to trust you with them. Show us where they are. We allow you, Holy Spirit, to come and, and show them. And then as we trust, as we begin to trust, or we, maybe we, in the next few days, uh, we trust you with, with those non-negotiables. They become negotiable with you. And may we see you at work through us, not for our glory, but like Jesus, uh, for, for others' glory, for God's glory. May we be like Jesus, not, not concerned about how others see us or um, how impressed they are with us. Uh, may they be impressed with our uh, foolish humility.
Let us pray. Gracious God, fountain of all wisdom, we pray for all Christian people, for our local leaders, for those who teach and guard the faith. Pray especially for uh, each of us as we come back into church life. Our Lord, make us receptive to hear from you. We pray for those who are teachers in schools and for our young people and our children as they go back to school. May the word of Christ dwell richly in all of our hearts and knit us together in the bond of your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the leaders of the nations and for those in authority under them. Pray for our government and for our local leaders, making decisions about uh, how to uh, stop the spread of the pandemic. Give all the gift of your wisdom and a right discernment in all things. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our community here in Isleworth, for those who live and work within the parish, for those who visit this place, uh, those who serve others within uh, Isleworth. Think of our friends at Atfield, key workers at the hospital, those who care for loved ones at home. Speak your word of peace in our midst and help us to serve one another as Christ has served us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who don't know Jesus and yet who long to know you, the very word of life. Open their ears to hear your voice and open their hearts to the knowledge of your love in Christ. We pray for churches uh, across our country as uh, we come into a new term. Lord, that uh, we would find creative ways to reach out to people through the internet or in our services in our buildings to bring the good news of Jesus uh, to those that need to hear. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for those bowed down with grief or fear or sickness. And uh, those who struggle with mental health or worry. Those who feel alone or isolated because of the pandemic. May your living word bring comfort and healing to all those in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of the Church, hear our prayer and make us one in heart and mind to serve you with joy forever. Amen. Thank you, Dave, for leading us in our prayers this morning. Let's join together and pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The service is nearly at an end. Just a reminder that we would love to hear from you. We, uh, we hear loads of things, hard things that are happening, good things are happening in the life of our community, but we don't always hear everything. And Dave and I would love to be in touch in, with you. Uh, maybe there is something that we can pray for you. Maybe there is some good news that you want to tell us about. Uh, please do get in touch uh, this week. We'd love to hear with you, connect with you, maybe even pray with you. Do also keep a lookout this week for the emails and videos and all the updates about what's going on in the life of the church. And hopefully I can see as many people as possible in our church buildings as we gather to worship uh, together next week. Our YouTube services will be continuing. And so um, if you miss it or you want to watch it again, you can still uh, join in online as well. A prayer of blessing for you and for those for whom you pray today. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>